Why did I think having kids was a good idea? It was a bright summer morning. I was relaxed, it was beautiful, about to swoop in the driveway. My wife throws open the door of the house. Jeffrey, I need you here right now. I run off the driveway, I run into the house. I'm like, where are you, where are you? In the basement, right now, come on. So I head around the, the corner, down the basement stairs, and there I see all three children covered from head to toe with white paint. What were you thinking? I calmly ask, what happened here, children? Then the oldest took up the spokesperson job. Well, you see, Dad, these paint cans were here, so we formed them into a drum set. We started drumming on the paint cans. One tipped over and the paint started to run out on the floor. Now yesterday we were down here with Mommy and we got some paint on us and Mommy said, it's no big deal guys. You can wash this paint off with soap and water. So we decided when the paint ran out to paint ourselves. I was staring at the biggest mess I had ever seen in my life. I didn't know whether to wash the kids first, toys first, the walls first, or the rug first. I have to admit, I had this terrible thought. Why did I think having kids was a good idea? I wonder if God ever feels the same way. When I read my Bible, I see things like he was grieved that he made man, that his heart was broken, that he seemed to be hurt because of the way we act. We're sinful and we're selfish and we fight with each other and our hearts go after anything but God. I mean, we make messes. Why did God think it was a good idea to have kids? My wife had a college roommate whose nickname was The Perf. The reason she was called this is because she was perfect in every way. Her hair was perfect, her clothes were perfect, her speech was perfect. I mean, she was The Perf. So one day I'm at my wife's apartment and the perf's waiting for her dad to pick her up for an event and he's late. Now this is absolutely mind boggling to the perf because no perf family member is ever late for anything. So when he comes in, this little conversation goes on. Daddy, you're late. Angel, I was stuck in traffic. Daddy, I was worried about you. Angel, we should probably get going, otherwise we'll be even later. Half an hour later, the perf returns. Guys, I'm really sorry for arguing with my dad in front of you. Arguing? Are you kidding me? In my house, arguing would be like plates flying, screaming, yelling. In the perf's house, it's daddy, angel, daddy, angel. So years later, after we have kids, the perf invites me and my kids over for dinner at her house. I am in a panic. My kids are mess makers. So we go to her house, we sit at the table, and I am prepared for the worst. But instead, my son Benjamin, who never eats anything put on his plate, eats all of his food. My other kids sit there like total angels, acting polite and nice and kind and sweet. The Perf's kids, they're a disaster. They're all over the place, pandemonium. And then, to put the icing on the cake, my son Ben says to me, hey dad, would you mind if I prayed before I left the table? <laughs> I'm like, Perf, would you quiet your kids down please so my son could have his evening prayers? This particular night, my kids were a perfect reflection of my glory. The Westminster Catechism opens with this question. Why did God make people? The answer, to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Isaiah 43, 6 and 7 says it this way, Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory. Interesting. What does it mean to glorify God? When you glorify something, you magnify its greatness. Literally, you become a reflection of it. We were created by God to reflect Him, to be a mirror, an accurate image of God's glory to the world. If you call yourself a Christian, it means you've fully embraced your identity as a child of God. It means that everything you do reflects on Him. So what does your life say about who God is? So here's my question for you. What does it look like to reflect God's glory to the world? It's kind of this big, heady theological concept, but I mean, what do you have to do? What actions do you have to take so that the world gets a proper picture of God? Hey, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think.